What's going on, Flow Combaters? I'm here with the man. Well, hold on. Before we get into it, I, you may you're still actually the Bellator champion, right? Uh, you know, technically, if you, if you want to get technical about it, the belt was never taken from me. I I let it back go up for grabs, and uh, you know, Kreskov got or Lima got it, and then Kreskov got it, and then Lima got it back. But the real belt is still at one. Oh, I should get my address on. I was gonna get my address. <laughs> no. Well, you want to get your address on? People, here's my show up. Yeah. That's me. Hey, so that's what I'm saying. So we're here with Ben Askren, folks. Now, Ben, Ben is coming here tonight to, to Bellator Card because the the best welterweight in the world has to show up sometimes when 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 other guys are fighting for for, for scraps for you, right? Like, cause you already well, got Red Lima, right? Yeah. You know, genuinely speaking, I'm here to watch friends, right? But when you get down to it, people debate who the best welterweight in the world is. There's no doubt about it. It's me. I was thinking about this earlier, Dwayne. This is a math for you. I oh. fought 43 minutes against Lima and Kreshkov combined, right? Those are yep. two pretty good fighters. If you scored minute by minute, I won all 43. So I, I'm 43-0 and 0 against these guys. I didn't lose a round. I didn't even lose a minute. I was thinking if you broke it out by 10-second segments, I don't even know if I lost a 10-second segment. So maybe 430 and 0. How, depending on how you want to break it down. These guys never stood a chance against me. And, you know, we're seeing how good these guys are now. I made them look terrible, but then Koreshkov goes and beats up ben and Benson Harrison, you know, UFC champion, yep. top 15 UFC welterweight when yep. he left. Um, but when it comes down to it, there's only one best welterweight in the world. It's this guy. It's this guy right here. And he wants big fights. So when you see a guy like there's a certain Canadian that's here in town. Yeah. And there's a there's, there's a Corey a, Anderson sighting. Oh, Corey Anderson, I like that guy. Yeah, he's good. Good I people. Pan over to that. But hey, back to here. We gotta talk about this. Come on, get back. Focus. You gotta get Corey Focus Anderson, Focus man. Focus. All right, so you know. Sure. What do you think about the, the like a, a potential fight with, with Rory McDonald? That's something you picked for a while, right? I, you know, I, I picked that fight a long time ago, and obviously, you know, UFC is talking about Angela Lee, great, very, very great fighter. Versus Joanna, I can't say her damn yeah, last name. Say champion. You know, Joanna, Joanna champion. champion, best best uh, female. What damn weight class is that? I uh, one fifteen. One fifteen, but it's like flyweight or no, it's strawweight. Like strawweight, thank you. Um, for the best fight in the world, and you know, I would love to fight Rory Lorenz. I don't give a damn. Um, but I picked the Rory fight a long time ago. I started fighting for free when I was Mike over the UFC because I figured there's not an easier way to the belt. I'll beat this guy up no problem. So I said I'll fight him for free because I know he's not even a problem. I'll get him out of the way. They give me the damn belt. They give me a bunch of money. And it'll be all all she wrote. So that yeah, of course. So you know if we're looking to do an inter uh, inter organizational matchup, I'd love to take on either one of those guys. I don't need Liam or Kreshkov. I already showed everyone how good they are. I need someone else. And speaking of someone else, you know, there's a name that you know, maybe George St. Pierre is going to fight in UFC, and there's a lot of talk that that's never going to happen. I don't believe it. No, you don't. So, I don't why, it. so since we're extending offers uh, for ass to the Canadians, why don't you go ahead and pass that one out there too? George, obviously, if you want to make a comeback against someone else, I, you know, I know George hates Dana. Maybe that hasn't been said publicly, but we it is can now. All, we can all read between the lines there. And uh, George hates Dana. I think that's one of the things that's going to come back. So, George, if you ever want to come to Asia, it's a, Singapore is a beautiful place. We'd love to have you. I'd love to see you inside the cage. And, you know, you'd have fun in Asia, but you'd have a bad night against me. Now, I want to talk to outside of your work in the cage, you've made a lot of progress in this uh, uh, lobbying to get the Muhammad Ali Act for yeah. MMA. Now, this is picking up steam. I just talked to John Fitch the other day. Okay. He said, you guys are winning at every turn, it feels like. Yeah. And then, But then when their news comes out about how much the, the UFC is spending the lobby against yes. it. Yeah. So the fight never stops, does it? Not really. You know, I, I have a hard time with the MMAFA as the main group pushing it. And, and I was just talking to my wife about there's the inner struggle in me, right? Because part of it supports these fighters who are they're looking for sympathy right and, and I don't want to win via sympathy I want to win because it's the right way to win when they say like oh my god woe is me look at the shit money we're making I don't like that because you knew the shit money you were making when you got into MMA right right now if we want to say well UFC is, for example is taking in this revenue and they're giving out this revenue right most major organizations NFL NBA NHL are around 50 percent of the revenue right and now UFC, for example, is private, a private entity, so we don't know, but most experts guess it's between 8 and 14%. So when you think, most major league sports, 50%. 
UFC, 8 to 14%. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. There, there's some serious issues there. So if we want to say, well, it's the right thing to do, let's do that. But let's not say, oh my God, look at us. We can't barely feed our families. Well, if that's the case, to get another freaking job, okay? So I don't want to win via sympathy. I want to win because it's the right thing to do for the fighters. That's right. And speaking of winning, that's all you've ever done in your, in your MMA career. I love winning. Sometimes I win so much I get sick of it. <laughs> Is that true? No, you don't get sick of winning. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> like it, like, but but you're you're competitive at everything you do. So, everything. So like, it could be anything. Pick it. Like neck four. Like getting here from fucking 41st Street because the Uber driver wouldn't go any faster. I was booking it. I beat everyone in the race here. Oh my God, look at that, Dwayne. <laughs> That's an amazing tattoo. <laughs> That's an amazing tattoo. So. <laughs> You just you just had a, a, a win, uh, a clean business in your yes. in your last outing. Yeah. I know you want to get back and do two or three fights yeah. this year. I do. So I you know I was talking to him the other day. I don't think uh, May uh, May not May 18th, August 18th in Malaysia. Not gonna play, but there is a big September 2nd card in uh, Shanghai. They're looking to do it really big. That'll be uh, you know one of their first. They've been in China a few times. One of their next full raise into China so I'm looking to uh, fight on that Shanghai card September 2nd it's gonna be a really big show I'm excited for it. now you know you're the welterweight champion there's a guy who's holding that 85 pound belt that that you've been uh, you've been hunting down too are you is Big Dash gonna sign the paperwork and make it happen well yeah I, th I think he fights in a week or so here so my first order of business I'm gonna beat up this Kadistan guy um, make very quick work of him another quick turnaround cuz I gotta line these up I gotta knock these out I got a lot I got a lot of unfinished business, so I got to get a lot of fights this year. So I'm gonna take Kedastam out September 2nd, and then hopefully I don't know October, November, whenever they let me in there. Are you gonna take time to defend your Bellator title too, since you're here in New York? I might do that tonight. We'll see. <laughs> Hop in there. So there we go. Always great catch up with the funky one, the best 170 pound, 170 pound fighter in the world. It looks good. It looks good oh. on you, right? Yeah, this is fun, Dwayne. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. All right, see you guys.